It's what success looks like. It's not about the money. It's not about the fame. It's all about how you play the game. This is what success looks like. And today I've got with me what you might call a renaissance man, somebody that has started several businesses, somebody that is a producer, somebody that's a director, somebody that's a father, somebody that's a teacher, and I don't know which is his most important role, but I'll just let him tell you a little bit about what he loves to do best. Chip Desard, my buddy, my friend, man, thanks for coming on the show today. How are you doing? Hey, Bobby, thanks a lot. It's an honor to be here on the show. Love the show. Love what you're doing. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. So I, I, I said a whole lot about you at the beginning. I said all of the different titles that you have. And, man, most people that are around you probably wouldn't know that you have accomplished so many things, probably because you're one of the most humble dudes that I know. But <laughs> if you are in the Christian world at all or the Christian media world, um, a lot of people have heard of Praise Vision. Dot com, but a lot of people don't know that you're one of the, the, the co-founders or one of the, the brains or the heads behind that entire concept. Tell me a little bit about pulling that together. How did that come about? Yeah, back in uh, early 2000, my sister and I'm a partner in New York, uh, one thing I realized is that early on, I realized I wasn't smart in, in itself by myself. So I've always tried to partner with guys that are smarter than me or who knows specialty. So you'll never really see me starting ventures or businesses by myself. Yeah. I may be, if you may think I'm a hit, but it's always somebody else. So a guy, Gary Saunders, we got together and I got another gentleman named Terrence and he did streaming. I did streaming. Uh, streaming services were really big. We're really on in, in 2004 or five, we're really starting up and just wanted to provide services for churches because I had clients all over. He had clients, and my friend Terrence said, hey, let's come together. Let's just call it Praise Vision. Let's do a streaming media portal, and it really it took off like that. All right, awesome. So now you've, you've done Praise Vision. You had uh, a company called Absolute Presence Web Media for a while, and uh, now you've got something else cooking, and I'm using that word yeah. intentionally. Yeah. Webvideochefs.com. Yeah. That's your pet project. Now, tell me, tell us a little bit about Web Video Chefs. Yeah, my partner and I, Monty Channel, and it's funny that, um, like I said, I always do love joint ventures and love doing businesses, but this is what I really, really are passionate about because this is uh, uh, back in 2000 and probably uh, eight or seven, I hooked up with uh, Amani via YouTube, believe it or not, just via YouTube, met him there. And then we became fast friends and asked himself on social media. I was new to video. I, I've always known video, but I was new to it. And um, I started doing tutorials on my own, again, just on, on my own. I, 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 people asked me some questions and found some software, screen capture software. I said, let me just put these up on my personal YouTube channel. Thought nothing of it. I started getting comments, more views, more views. And then Amani was doing tutorials, too, as well. Another kind of praise vision situation. Hey, let's put our forces together. Let's start a site. And let's let's call web video chefs. But then we're like, nah, let's don't call it that because we think people think we're cooks and we, you know think we're cooks and we're you know, recipes. So it took us a long time to even launch it. So we launched in 2011, and um, when we launched it, soft launched, and then we really really started really probably taking it seriously in 2012. And uh, we really uh, have a lot of members, and we provide not only technical support, we do courses. Uh, we did a live seminar, and uh, we're just always expanding uh, video training and, and helping people create better videos, and that's one of my passions. Awesome. So uh, I, you've said a couple of times joint ventures, joint ventures. Now, there's a lot of people that uh, have a, a dream or have an idea in mind, but they attack and try to do this thing by themselves, and they burn out or they don't make it after a while. How do you come across um, people that are of like mind enough that you can trust and be willing to get into a joint venture with them? 
Yeah, it's 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 difficult because for many many successful joint ventures, I had had one or two that were not successful. So you have to you know be really deliberate about it. Uh, the person has to have a similar work ethic, or if they have a work ethic like you, you they have to be able to uh, uh, check you. You know, if you're down one day, they're up, and especially if you're not in the same city. A lot of my joint ventures are with people who are not in the same city. You know, right. we can't just go and meet. So when we do meet. It feels like we have that time. I was in Atlanta recently with Imani, but when we met, we did something called batching where we had meetings, we taped a whole bunch of things. So our stuff is not time sensitive. But the the key for joint ventures is same vision, same heart. And, um, you know, with business, get things on paper. You right. know, uh, just make sure you have stuff on right. You can be friends, but just make sure you have things. You know, you know who's ahead, you know who's responsible for this and that. And, um, you know, joint ventures aren't for everybody. Trust right. me. You know, but I think for me, I know me, and I think they work well uh, for for my types of business. And and you know, I still do other things on my own, but I think that I'm stronger when I'm partnering with someone. So, uh, what if it's not working? I mean, do you cut the cord real quick? How do you know how to proceed if you're if it's not working, or how do you determine whether it's just like a rough patch that you're going through? Yeah, I mean, you 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 kind of know, and 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 I think that comes on the pre-planning, and I think that you will know if the joint venture isn't going to to work. And sometimes you you're in denial. It's kind of like a marriage almost. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get a divorce, but with these joint ventures, you do have something called escape clauses. You know, right. if you need to escape, a partner will do this and will take this. So you have those. At least I have those in every uh, joint venture that I have. And, and right. that, that I've been a part of. You know, I'm no longer a part of Praise Vision, but when it was my time to leave, I just left quietly, and it was fine. I always be a co-founder, but it was, it was those kind of things that it was in a contract that at a certain time, you know, I would be transitioning. And I think that as long as you have things in writing and you go forward, and it's, it's really no hard feelings about that, you know? Right. And, and, and I think, I don't know if I can ever say you will know, but it's kind of that that you will have an inkling to say, you know what, this is it's time to, to move up, to move on. Okay, okay, okay. So now one of the things that I love about doing this, this show is that um, some people have already reached uh, certain milestones or certain stages of their success and other people have a plan and a path and they're on their way. And all of that comes with a story. All of that comes with a story. Some of it more dramatic than others, um, but everybody has a story nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So why don't you give me a little synopsis of, of your story? Where did you come from to get to where you are now, and what are you doing now? Yeah, the Cliff Notes version is that I was in school, and, and like most college students, I didn't know what in the world I wanted to do. And, you know, so I, I dropped out. So I, I really didn't know what I'd do. And I shared this in one of my podcasts. Mm -hmm. But to, to, to just say it shortly, I didn't, I'm one of those kind of late bloomers, they say, because right. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So then I joined the workforce. And when I worked for a company back then, it was called Kinko's. Now it's called FedEx Office. Right. I got into technology. I got into web design. I got into copies. Tech, and I really excelled at it. Then I got promoted. Then I got promoted again. Then it dawned on me. You say, you know what? I need to go back and finish my degree. So <laughs> then I, while working full time, I finished uh, degrees. And, 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 and I learned that I, I figured out that I, I was just as smart. And I think people have to realize this. They were just as smart as other people without degrees. Not saying degrees, because some people don't really need degrees in this day and age, but I'm just right. saying that I think that it was more of a confidence thing. I think sometimes in life, the people, they feel that they still, you know, everybody wants to feel they made it and they've right. done something, but I think it was, you have to be comfortable in your own skin, and I think that as long as you're comfortable in your own skin, you can really begin to be successful, and at least in your own eyes. And you don't need everybody to validate you, to hit the like button, to hit the plus one button on everything. So I think that even before that was even invented, I had to get comfortable with myself. And that was a point where, when I was low, of course, because I was working the night shift, I was working 11 to 7, going to school uh, from 8 to 12 noon, then going back to bed <laughs> from 1 to to, to 6.30 to get up to study. So it was hard. It was very hard going yeah. full-time and working night shift, full-time and paying for college myself. Oh, you know? my gosh. <laughs> well, let, so. let me ask you a personal question then. Some people don't um, like to answer this question about age, but you said you went back. How old were you when you finished? 
Uh, I was 30, actually. Wow. 30. Okay. So I, I dropped out when I was 22, and I went back when I was 27. Yeah. So I took from 22 to 27. That's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time to be out of school. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people said, you know, I would never do it. I would never go back. And, you know, I was like, ah, but then I think when you're focused and determined, and that's, I think the word is tenacious. You, you know, you want to make sure you get everything and you want to make sure you do it. I'm like the kind of person that if I start something, I have to finish it. Yeah. I have to at least try it to say, you know, I think Michael Jordan said, you know, you can accept failure, but you can't accept not trying. You know, I got to try it. I got to make sure that I give it 100%. And then if I if I say, hey, you know, I'm going to at least go to the grave saying I, I, I did what I could. So that's what happened. Awesome. So that tenacity, man, that that go get it aggressive. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get it no matter what the cost. Uh, mentality is something that some people are born with and some people kind of develop yeah, along I developed the way. It. <laughs> I yeah. developed it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how, how, did you, how did you, how'd you yeah. develop it? I mean, where'd you get it from? Who was your mentor? What were some of yeah. the influences, the things that allowed you to get like that? Yeah. Younger. I, I, and, and it's weird. It was, um, it was a conversation. I'll never forget. It was with a, a, an entrepreneur that's in the Baltimore area. You know him. His name is Robert Wallace. Yeah. Probably back in 2000 and, three we had breakfast and he was just telling me you know his story his backstory how he went to go get it and he's one of my mentors and I know you uh, he's influenced you as well but we we talked and he he just shared his story with me I looked at my dad I looked at my mom and I and I looked at you know their school teachers and I just I just when I was working at Kinko's, and it's amazing, and people who are listening know when you work the night shift, you have a lot of time to think. <laughs> you have a lot of time. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'll beat you, but there's not a lot of customers around. You think about your life. Everything becomes introspective. Yeah. I worked the night shift for about a year and a half. You know, so I did it. It was hard, really yeah. hard. But I, during that time, I had a lot of time to think about my life plan it if I can have another chance. And I realized one thing, Bobby, that I was just as smart as everybody else. Yeah. But I wasn't using my talents. And until I said that in myself, until I have this blog, I said, you choose yourself. You know, you had to ch I chose myself. And I chose myself to say, you know what? I can do this. Yeah. And I didn't need anybody else to validate me. I had some mentors. I had some people to guide me. But I knew if it was going to be, it's going to be up to me, you know? And I just, I said, you know what? I cannot be in this place all my life. So, therefore, I'm going to hustle. And, you know, and, and, and that's why, you know, my wife always teases me. She said, I don't know how you do it, but you are always hustling, always something. I've never met anybody that hustles. And that's why I like people who hustle because I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm wearing, wearing a shirt now called No Alarm Clock Lead It, you know, because I passionately wake up in the morning to yeah. do what I have to do, man. I, I, I don't need anybody to say, hey, come to work or, hey, you know, don't do this. So, Okay. So now you, you brought up the T-shirt, man. You brought up waking yeah. up in the morning and you, brought, and you brought up hustle. Now, some people listening might, might think that, oh, well, you know, gosh, I'm just not a morning person. Um, and some people just got, they have this bone that allows them to just wake up and be, yeah, every time they get up in the morning. So what do you do, man? Do you, are you a coffee drinker? What do you do to get it going in the morning? How, how do you encourage oh, and inspire yourself every day? Yeah, man, I listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of audio books, uh, probably over, not that I listen to over motivational speakers when I'm driving. I just feel my thing. You, you try to try to read a lot, and I listen to a lot of stuff. So the more I feel that you surround yourself with that type of things in your environment, um, you it, it just rubs off on you, man. And, and, and I'm inspired by other people, what they do. So mm -hmm. instead of getting jealous of somebody saying, man, you know, of course you always have, have you see your friends doing stuff, you're like, man, I wish I could do that. You know, I put on one of my Facebook statuses one morning, one day that I'm preparing for a TED Talk. No, I don't have an invitation to a TED Talk, but when <laughs> I get it, I'm going to be ready. That's you know right. what I mean? So I just put that in the atmosphere. I know it sounds hokey. I know it sounds crazy to people. It sounds like, you know, because people are scared to put stuff out there because they said, what if I don't get it? Will people judge me? I'm the kind of person like, I don't care if I don't get it, but I want to be prepared when, you know, when opportunity knocks and if I'm not, you know, I need to be ready. I, I And I don't need to be ready the day before. Right. So, and I think if I take small steps today to prepare me for five years from now, and I think that's where a lot of people need to go, just take small steps. It's not built in one day. Nothing, nobody's an overnight success. Nobody can just do something immediately.
You know, yeah. and, and and we see people on the internet, and we see these people talking. I don't want to name the names, but we're like, wow, they're millionaires. They did this, they did that, but we don't know their story. You know, yeah, we don't know their entire story. How long they've been doing it? Uh, people see my videos. I mentor a couple of guys, and on videos, and they see the videos, and they don't know that I've been doing this for like five, six years. When if you go back on my YouTube channel, my videos were horrible. You know, I'm to a point where people pay me now, but they they're trying to get to the level now. I mean, it's it's a thing, it's a, it's a thing by um, uh, on Ira Glass. It's called the art of storytelling. I use it a lot in my presentations. He said, your taste is one thing that you have, but your ability is somewhere else, and yeah. your taste is always greater than your ability. And you want to create great stuff, but you know the stuff you're creating is garbage right now. Like right. my students in high school, they 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 they're creating stuff, but then the next year they get better. Then the next year they get better. You know, so I think right. incrementally you get better, and you have to know that right now your taste is greater than what you can create, and right. I knew that, and and at the time, and I still feel that way sometimes. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned high school. I mean, wh what do you say to students? Or let me back up again here. You you mentioned that people don't know the backstory and the time that it took you to get to where you are, and a lot of times people don't do certain things because they are scared out of their wits of failing. So what do you say to people like that? What do you say to your students when they say, hey, you know, what happens if I mess up? How do, how do you prepare people? How do you prepare yourself to deal with failure? Yeah, I, I think that, that that's a great question. I mean, especially young kids, they're, they're fearless, but then they're more of uh, a fear of looking silly if they do right. something, if they mess something up, if they fall. You know, I just say, hey, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to mess up. You're going to make bad judgment calls sometimes. But I think that you really have to just have something I call stick to itiveness. You have to stay with it and, and, and just keep at it. I mean, I can't teach, I can teach them concepts. I can't teach you character. You come with that. You either have it or you don't. You know, you, have, you either want it or you don't want it. And I think that a lot of our kids, at least in my school and other schools I've been around, they give up right before they have a breakthrough. I have some excellent kids, man, that I could take on video shoots and audio and photography everywhere. I have some kids that I could probably t take down the hallway to do anything. So, right. you know, but I, I just think those kids that I can take anywhere, I've taken the places, those are the kids that will stay after school and say, hey, you know, Mr. Zard, I need you to help this. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. That's what anything in life and the character is what, you know, I try to still, you know, on our kids and my kids and just say, hey, you know, you can't get that intangible, but but you can mess up, and it's okay to mess up. You got to learn from it, but then right. continue to go on. Awesome, man. So now, uh, both you and myself, we we love gadgets. We love technology. Tell yeah. me a little bit about the technologies that you are using in your business to help you be successful. Um, well, not in your business only, but maybe in your life yeah. generally. What 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 are you loving in social media these days? Yeah, well, a lot of things. Social media, well, uh, gadgets, of course. I've gone through phones, iPhones, Windows phones, Android, and all the phones. <laughs> <laughs> but what I really like right now is um, apps. I really think that app revolution. Um, I'm really into Google. Um, um, if I wasn't the Apple ecosystem so so much, I would really consider just going Google. <laughs> you know, yeah. I really like the apps that they have. Um, what they're doing with, on search. Um, I'm really into Google Plus now. Yeah. Um, but I really, of course, I like apps like Evernote. Um, I'm using apps called Buffer, uh, TweetDeck. And, and, of course, the other apps that we use all, all the time are, are you know, I, I, I'm using um, a podcast app all the time to listen to my podcast. So, um, but the app that I probably couldn't live without probably right now is Evernote. And I okay. use everything for Evernote. And, and, and you know. Ever know, and I love uh, uh, blogging with WordPress. WordPress just had their 10th anniversary. I right. really enjoy WordPress uh, websites. And uh, uh, to me, that's revolutionized the way, actually, my business, because my business is based on a WordPress uh, web video, just based on a WordPress website and back end. Yeah. And uh, uh, I really like that as a web technology. Okay, so um, you mentioned your website. I, I wasn't going to ask this, but let me, let me ask this. Um, one of the things that I think both of us have our websites based on the Genesis framework. Um, 
a lot of people don't know the difference between you know frameworks and child themes and all of those types of things. Can you give a, give us a quick rundown of what that is? What difference does it make, or does it make a difference? Yeah, I think it makes a huge difference. I mean, the guys and the ladies over at our, uh, Copy Blogger Media, I think, have created this. I know their competitors' thesis, but basically, right. it's it's just an overarching theme that our framework basically is a foundation for your blog. Right. And what I like about it, and you know this as well, I mean, your listeners and viewers, is that um, for search engine optimization, I mean, they're gone are the days where people will type in, you know, robertkennedy3.com. No, they will search for your name in Google and then come and come up. You right. know, long gone are the days where people type in web video, you know, they type for Chip Dizard. So I think that if you have a solid framework, it's like a house. You have a solid frame. You can yeah. put any design on it. You know, you can put any, 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 you know, paint it and put shingles on it, but you got to have a solid frame. And I think a lot of people who have websites and blogs just get the prettiest blog. And right. I've been, I've been, I've been, you know, a victim of that many times. So they'll change themes many times. But once you find something that's good, that works, that's SEO, and, and that's a whole other conversation with SEO, but right. that is compliant. I think that that will really help. I just had a call yesterday with a, a gentleman, a pastor. I was telling him to move him his site from Blogger to WordPress, and he was like, "It's just so much. How do you do?" It? I said, "You got to do it piece by piece." And I was yeah. just giving him things, and he didn't understand why he should leave Blogger. And you know, and I was like, "No, you need WordPress. You need a theme. You need a framework." And um, he understood it, but it, it's 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 a lot if you're not familiar with it. Get your head around, but. There's something called Google that you can research on YouTube <laughs> that, <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> I get more of my questions and referrals from YouTube than probably because I'm a video guy than anything. There's not a day that goes by almost that I don't get a question, even on holidays, yeah. they come by on YouTube a question. I'm quite sure you get the same thing. Awesome. So um, here is one, we're, we're kind of wrapping up here. Um, I read a book by Steve Chandler called... Uh, what was the, which book was this? Oh, the Wealth Warrior. And one of the phrases or the quotes that I really loved in there talked about the fact that there's two things that you're always doing in life. And they use the same letters. You're either reacting or you're creating. So I always like to ask people, I don't like to react anymore myself. I love to be in creation mode. I always like to ask people, what are they creating? What are you creating now, Chip? Yeah, well, creating a series of things. Amani and I are creating uh, a, a hands-on training series. Uh, we get a lot of requests uh, for what video production looks like from pre-production on. So a behind-the-scenes look. So not even the editing, because I can do the editing tutorials, but how do you conduct a pre-production meeting? How do you price a project? How do you, you know, deal with clients? You know what I mean? So a behind-the-scenes, behind-the-curtain look of how something is done for amateurs, you know, it's not for pros, it's really if you're, you're, you're new to production. Also finish up my ebooks, um, writing uh, those, uh, but they should be ready by the end of the summer. And then also uh, continue doing tutorials, man. So I'm always creating tutorials, always answering questions. Mm -hmm. But my main, uh, my main creation is really, um, like you said, a framework for people who are amateurs who've never shot a professional video before to show them how to go and the steps to take, and especially when it comes to uh, client interactions and, and, and things like that. So Great, man. So here's the final question. We always wrap up with this question, and I'll just say, Chip Desard, what does success look like for you? Success looks like um, a few things. It's, it's, it's really it's a three-part thing for me. You have to plan well. You have to execute, and then you have to provide extraordinary value. And then, to me, you'll do something amazing uh, with your life. And I think that uh, once you plan it, you, you you really go for it, and then you execute it, no matter what it is. I feel that you know it's not about the like buttons. It's not about we got to get over the plus one buttons or the retweet. Sometimes you just have to do it. And even when you feel that no one's watching, somebody, somebody, you've helped. You don't know how many people I've met that I've helped that I had no clue. And I think that we have to continue to better ourselves and be self-motivated. And to me, you don't need somebody to validate you. It's helpful if they do, but you know in your heart that you, when you lay your head in a pillow tonight, you've given 100%, and then the next day when you wake up, you're going to give another 110%. Yeah, 
Awesome. Th Chip, man, thanks so much for spending time with us today on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Chip Dazar. Check him out on chipdazar.com. That's C-H-I-P-D-I-Z-A-R-D.com. And webvideoschefs.com for his video tutorials. And that's it for today, what success looks like. Remember, be bold, be exceptional, and remember that each moment is just an opportunity for you to create something new. Have mm -hmm. an awesome day. Hi there, I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. I wanna to talk to you about one thing really quickly. A lot of us have goals, a lot of us have dreams, a lot of us have things that we want to achieve. And the reason that we can't achieve them is due to one thing. That one thing is fear. Fear is the barrier that stands in between where you are now and greatness. Fear is the obstacle that you've gotta overcome in order to get to your success. And I wanna be able to help you do that. So I've put together a book called 28 Days to a New Me, A Journey of Commitment that just came out and you can grab that for your Kindle or for your Nook on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. 28 Days to a New Me is about creating powerful transformations that'll change your life. It's about redefining commitment. It's about being bold and being exceptional. Go online to Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com, grab a copy, and see how you can change your life.